Oh, all right, boys, what is up? And welcome back to another episode of F1 2021, my team. Today, we have the Brazilian Grand Prix at the Autodromo Jose Carlos Pace. I'm going to stop pronouncing these names of the circuits because I feel like I'm just being disrespectful to the country that we're going to. Uh, but yeah, man, today, Brazilian Grand Prix. Last episode was the Mexican Grand Prix. If you have not seen that episode, go back and check that out. Before you watch this one, I highly encourage it. It is our best episode so far in this season, in my opinion, and it's got the least views. So make sure you go back and check the last video on the channel um, it's no spoilers but we do get our best finish in the season so far very worth the watch you can see there we've just gone through the r d department we can't buy any upgrades boys because we need to invest in our facilities and get them up a level but i want to save money so we can get a good teammate at the end of the season you can see now we're going through some of the drivers pierre gasly 92 rated there was a driver update just before this video was recorded uh, max verstappen is now 95 rated when Ayrton Senna, Michael Schumacher and Lewis Hamilton are all 94 rated. So Max Verstappen is higher rated than Senna, Schumacher and Hamilton. It's crazy to me. But you can see here, boys, we advance to the race weekend in Brazil. Uh, and this is the screen we are greeted with when I click on the powertrain. So obviously there was new regulations we got told about a bit earlier. Um, I thought they were going to be in the aero department because I've seen other YouTubers on career mode and theirs was in the aero department. But ours right there, as you can see, uh, warning regulation changes. Um, they're coming into force at the start of next season, making existing upgrades obsolete in their current state. You've got to adapt them for 50% of their development costs to make them legal for next season. So, as you can see on the screen, we have quite a few um, to do. Got quite lucky that it was only the engine, to be fair, because I feel like there's a lot more upgrades in the chassis or in the, the aero department um, compared to what we've done on the engine. It was mainly just the engine power that we had to, to redo, but you can see I have been saving up our points for this very reason, because I knew the regulations would come in. Not that I can upgrade anything anyway, because um, you know we don't have the facilities upgraded enough. I don't think you have the facilities for that, big man. <laughs> But you can see we adapt our engine for next season. Going to be interesting to see next season how these regulations do affect the grid. Um, if any teams are going to like not adapt their parts and then suddenly fall down the, the pecking order, you know. Like imagine Mercedes end up like going from the top to the bottom you know what i mean because they haven't developed their engine or something but uh, you can see there we go ahead and get a tire wear upgrade as well because we did have some um resource points left over but we advanced through to qualifying now in the brazilian grand prix and it is raining as you can see boys quality in the rain not my favorite thing to do um just driving in the rain in general on this um game you can see the setup on the screen that right now uh, we do increase the rear wing and the front wing by one uh, click each just because it is raining when it comes to the race and um, we do put that front wing back down but i've just realized we can't change the rear wing again so we had a higher rear wing for the race than uh, maybe we would have liked but I wanted to try and get us a good time in qualifying, you know, so we adapted um, very slightly to qualifying. I normally give a track guide, but um, it's quite hard to do when it is in the rain because your breaking points are all um, different, you know. So we're just going to watch through the laps um, and you can pretty much get a good idea of how to approach these circuits, you know, staying to the inside left here. That is the best line, hooking that care. Don't hook it too much because you will spin. And Carlos Sainz comes out to the pit here while we're on a flying lap here, boys. We get a nice slipstream from Carlos and he moves out the way very nicely for us. He could have stayed in front of us there and completely ruined our lap as we came around that corner. But... Carlos Sainz, the man who was on the podium last weekend alongside us, moves out the way very nicely for us. And I said last episode, Carlos might be a differential shout for a teammate for next season, you know. And he's just moved out the way for us there. He's looking like he could be a friendly option to get, you know what I mean? Like, we've obviously had conflict in the past with Dan Tickton. Everyone remembers that fat-headed cunt. Uh, and then we've got Callum Eilot as well. Um, we haven't really had conflict with Eilot because he's been so far behind us, you know what I mean? Like... We've been trying to battle for points and Eilat's been trying to battle to finish the race. So, um, we break here on the grass. Last year, that was all AstroTurf, but this year they've put like, grass on it. So, it's a weird texture, that little curve that we've just ridden there. It's still AstroTurf, but there's grass coming through it. So, it, sometimes like I'll lock up on that section, so it's very weird. But, um, heading towards the line, take the shortest front of the line as possible, hugging the wall here. And we go four tenths quicker on our previous lap. Uh, and set a 116.0, uh, which puts us P7 above, or P6, sorry, above P7, uh, which is Daniel Ricciardo and uh, Lando Norris in there to McLaren. So, you can see, uh, we continue our lap, let Carlos out the way, being very friendly with Carlos Sainz. Um, you know, that might be a shout. And speaking of, Callum Eilos, 
this guy is qualified in P17, just missed out. Uh, well, I say just missed out. He's missed out by three tenths. You know what I mean? Like, he's a whole three 3.5 seconds slower than the leader there, Sergio Perez. Not that I expect him to qualify P1, but uh, this guy just reeks, bro. I can't wait for next season. Uh, so we can get a new teammate in the car. We run wide there, um, which is going to cost us a lot, a lot of time on this lap. Uh, but somehow, this was still our fastest lap in Q2 um, with 12 minutes left. In the session, I do believe it was breaking 75 meters down there to third gear, short shift to fourth. Always short shifting because it is in the rain. Uh, but you can start to see here, boys, a little dry line um, coming up on the, the track, you know, on the circuit. You can see uh, where these cars have been driving. Uh, which is creating a bit of a bit more traction, you know, so we can go a bit more faster. Um more faster? Is that even a word? I don't even know, bro, but yeah, coming through now, this lap felt very slow, but I think it was just because of the dry line. Um, that we do go quite fast um, you can see in the bottom right we do have a, a little orange indication there um, and that is because our ICE and gearbox are starting to wear um, now I thought our gearbox was okay I thought we had a fresh gearbox a few races ago but clearly not um, using the curb on the inside left to rotate the car there very nicely and just get on a throttle hug the inside here we run wide as you can see but and have a little snap of oversteer but you can just hug the curb all the way through there hug the inside Cross the line with a 116.0 yet again. Um, same time we got in Q1, but the Q1 lap felt so, so much faster than that one there. Um, we had a, a lot of mistakes in certain areas, you know. But um, that unfortunately, boys, puts us in P15 and we are knocked out the race because the top 11 cars went out on soft tyres. Now, we actually did go again at the end of the session because it said the track temperature was going to increase a little. Uh, we went out again at the end of the session on, on Inters still and it was quite hard even on the Inters. So I don't know how these guys went out on softs and how Yuki Sonoda set a 112.8 on soft tyres. Um, it's crazy to me, but um, yeah, let's get to the race. Formula One returns to Sao Paulo once again with the stage set for what promises to be another classic Brazilian Grand Prix. Sebastian Vettel famously clinched his third championship here in 2012. And in 2016, Max Verstappen treated us to one of the finest wet weather drives of all time. We're racing today then at Interlagos, a historic 2.7 mile circuit and one of the few anti-clockwise tracks on the calendar. 15 corners in total, 9 to the left and 6 to the right, with a technical middle section opening up to a flat-out sector 3. And that gives us our best passing opportunity down into turn 1. It's race day yet again, and joining me for a chat, Anthony Davidson. And our racers are certainly in for a rough day today. What will you be watching for as they go down into turn one? Well, the start of the race is always one of the most nerve wracking parts. You have to hope that everyone is able to get off to a clean start. And this is possibly the trickiest part of the entire race. So many drivers in such a small space and finding your breaking point into turn one as well. It's a testament to the driver's skill that there aren't more incidents. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Sergio Perez will lead us away from pole position, with Charles Leclerc alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Sonoda, Kimi Raikkonen and Norris. They've taken a grid penalty. Verstappen, Ricardo, Vettel and Lewis Hamilton. Ocon, the owner driver, Lance Stroll and Gasly. Pilot, Mick Schumacher, George Russell, and Antonio Giovinazzi. Mazepin, Fernando Alonso. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Bottas and Nicholas Latifi. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. Okay there, boys, you see we are starting in P12, I do believe. Um, a little bump up from P15 due to grid penalties. Bottas back in P21. Stinker from Bottas. Five red lights in Brazil. And it is lights out and away we go in the Brazilian Grand Prix. Uh, a very weird start in grid, boys. As you saw, we had Carlos Sainz, P3. Yuki Sonoda um, up there as well in P5. Or Kimi Raikkonen in P5 as well. What a wild, wild um, start in grid. But as we come through the first few corners now, you can see us battling there with Pierre Gasly and Lewis Hamilton just behind us. Uh, but we managed to hold some decent track position as we head towards. Now we are up into P11. Um, from 
our starting place um, and we're going to send it down the inside on Esteban Ocon there full send down the inside on Esteban uh, and we go around the outside Esteban still got the inside line but we get better traction on the outside and managed to make up a place on Esteban there I had a little look down the inside on Vettel there but this corner right here I'm pretty sure that's the one where Lewis Hamilton spun Alex Albon out not a place that you want to be sending it up the inside on someone um, so yeah so as you can see boys Max Verstappen is in front of us now uh, well we have Vettel in front on soft tyres but Verstappen in front of Vettel on hard hard tyres now even though um, obviously that Red Bull car is a lot more developed than ours those hard tyres are going to make Max so so much slower than me and Sebastian behind him uh, as you can see Sebastian's already up his ass, and we got a few laps later now DRS is enabled you can see how close Seb is up uh, Max's ass there uh, pause and <laughs> we head towards the DRS zone we know that Seb's probably going to make a move on um, Verstappen there we get into the slipstream as you can see they're going too wide now into the braking zone too wide into the braking zone Seb around the outside might be a bit of contact there Verstappen gets uh, the inside line there manages to stay in front and we've got so much speed on Seb coming through that corner now nearly making contact there we have to slow down so much and can we send one up the inside there we're going to send up the inside and Sebastian Vettel we touch the grass a little Seb doesn't give us enough room really to try and make a move there but we make the pass on Sebastian Vettel after he fails to make the pass on Max Verstappen again a little look up the inside there I was tempting fate every time I came up to that corner there but yeah it just wasn't to be now Max Verstappen in front of us on those hard tyres like I say heading towards the last few corners now heading towards that DRS zone on the home straight much better exit and we're using some battery charge there before we even get to the DRS zone tucked into his slipstream we're going to be so much faster than Max and there's a little bit of contact there Max and I was expecting him to give us some space to move out the way there but he doesn't we managed to overtake Max without even using any battery charge or do we Max up the inside through turn one he's going to stay with us and we managed to uh, to get past there almost a repeat of Esteban Ocon and Max was happening in Brazil a few years ago but down the DRS zone now, uh, you see there Verstappen has DRS and Seb is in behind us as well. But we're taking the inside line. We're going to push Max wide if possible, cut off his line on the exit there and stay in front of Max Verstappen on those hard tyres. Now, can we charge forward toward Daniel Ricciardo, who's turned into now uh, Kimi Raikkonen a few laps later on? Um, Sebastian, obviously, with that fast car, he's going to keep battling us. So we move out the way there. Try and defend the inside a little, uh, but Sebastian is obviously going to get DRS, but almost push him wide off the track there. That was a bit of uh, unsportsmanlike driving from me there. We pushed Seb a little bit wide in the exit, but um, you know, you've got to do what you've got to do. He's now seven tenths behind us. And we can charge forward towards Kimi Raikkonen, who you can see a few laps later. We have closed the gap uh, by nearly a whole second to Kimi. There's 1.6 seconds left now. And as it's going to be Vettel up the inside there, better contact through turn one. We go slow through turn two. And because we hit the brakes there through turn two, boys, very strategic of me. We get DRS for the DRS straight here. Um, and Sebastian doesn't, obviously, because he was in front of us when we crossed the detection line. So we managed to fly ahead um, a little, create a bit of a gap to Sebastian there which is very nice indeed something I didn't mention at the start boys our, um, our strategy for this race is soft into soft uh, because it's going to rain towards the end of the race according to the forecast so I wanted to stay on soft tyres um, until the rain hit uh, and hopefully we can drag out these two soft tyre stints uh, until the rain does come but who knows how that's going to work out we'll have to see later on in the video because of course when it does rain boys you want to be on soft tires if you are on if you're on slick tires you want to be on soft you know the mediums and hards you're going to struggle so much in um the rain and look at this Kimi Raikkonen we have a weird um snap there and we go off the track but Kimi Raikkonen boys he's moving about on the track like he's got an electric shock or something this guy he's such a dangerous driver boys you've seen all season you've seen last week in uh thingy in mexico he's such a dangerous driver we managed to pass him there at the end of the street at the end of the drs zone uh, but this guy like he's absolutely crazy bro he's he's so sporadic behind the wheel i don't know what he's gonna do every time i see him um you know i'm anticipating something mad from him every time i see the guy but boys uh, we are gonna pit now on uh, at the end of lap 15 you know we were supposed to pit on about lap 11 i do think the strategy said but i wanted to drag these soft tires out like i said to lap 15 um because if i can do 15 tires uh, 15 laps sorry on these soft tires uh, on both stints then hopefully the rain will hit towards those last six laps of the race and we'll be in a good position there um to you know be able to fight um, towards the end of the race we managed to drag the the tires out for the first 15 laps without any issues really you know i feel like we could have even gone a bit longer but the tires did start to drop off we were a bit slower um, but i wasn't getting any sliding or nothing like that uh, we come out to the pits there in p12 um so where we started on the grid initially 
Obviously, there's a lot of people in front of us that have still got a pit. We've got um, Fernando Alonso on hard tyres in front. He's our next target. We know this guy's going to be slow in that Alpine and on those soft tyres. We've got Lewis Hamilton uh, on the hard tyres. Sorry, we've got Lewis Hamilton on the soft tyres just in front of Fernando. Uh, and it looks like there's quite a big train in front. As you can see on the minimap in the left, boys, it looks like a Alpha Tari um, up there leading a train of about seven cars by the looks of it uh, we've got a ferrari two mclarens um hamilton in there uh, alonso and we've got a yellow flag in the next uh, section of the track here as we come around the corner let's see what the yellow flag is about it's sergio perez and he's just creeping onto the racing line there that was very dangerous from sergio i don't know what he's thinking there and um, you can see he's on the grass he must have had a spin or made contact with someone but he just slowly creeps back onto the track uh, and as we come around the corner now you can see he's creeping onto the racing line so we have to take a bit of a, a like a tighter line through there uh, very weird from Sergio it's a shame we couldn't see uh, before that and see what happened to him because the, the camera didn't go far enough back um, to see that but we have DRS now on um, on uh, Fernando Alonso sorry we've just overtaken Lance Stroll who was in the pits uh, and as we head towards the second DRS zone now we know it's going to be time to clear Fernando um, and look how we set that up. We move to the left. So Fernando moves to the left to defend. And we just cut back on the right. Very nice indeed. Uh, and now in front we can see Lewis Hamilton and Carlos Sainz. Going wheel to wheel. Sainz on the hard tyres there. Um, and yeah, Lewis looks like he's going to make the move. And he has done. Lewis has cleared Carlos. Um, and now it is our job to try and clear Carlos. Next you can see we've joined this train now though. Of Sainz, Hamilton, the two McLarens and Yuki Sonoda in the AlphaTauri. Obviously Yuki qualified like P4 or something on the grid. So... He's going to be high up in the race, um, but obviously he doesn't really have the race pace to match uh, his qualifying result because that Alvatari car is quite stinky. A few laps later, DRS zone on Carlos Sainz. Uh, he's going to push us a little wide. We're going to take a weird line into this corner. Lays on the brakes though, and he's on them hard tyres. We're going to clear Carlos with ease, and we go purple in sector one. Could this be a fastest lap of the race for us? Who knows? We might run into a bit of traffic, as you can see in front of us now. Lewis Hamilton on the soft tyres, Lando Norris, we're going to send it, oh no, we're not going to send it, we weren't close enough to send it down the inside there on that corner, but next lap, I'm sure we will be, you can see Daniel Ricciardo has finally cleared Yuki Tsunoda, the AI seems to have uh, issues in overtaking the other AI cars, you know, um, it looks like Yuki might be on hard tyres there as well, so I don't know why Lando, Lando is also on, on hard tyres, but I don't know how Hamilton hasn't cleared Lando um, and then cleared so no, that you know, Lewis Hamilton, 94 rated, best driver on the grid. Um, well, not in terms of rating, but in terms of just driving ability. Um, but let's see if we can clear Ham Hamilton now. Down the home straight, DRS open, battery. Um, we go purple in sector three. We don't get fastest lap of the race, though. So somebody else must have gone really fast there because we set a 108.65, which is a ridiculous time. Um, if only we could have done that in qualifying. Ridiculous, ridiculous time there. I don't know how we don't get fastest lap of the race with two purple sectors. That is outrageous. You can see we look at the engine there. A few components of the engine weird uh, a little bit. And the gearbox is going a little bit as well, which is not good. Not what you want to see. But you can see, boys, it's looking a bit dull. It's looking a bit overcast now compared to before. There's still some sun rays coming through there. Uh, but can we send it up the inside now on Hamilton and Lando Norris? We made contact with Norris and we've spun into the grass, boys. We have spun into the grass. That is an absolute harlow. We've got two greedy there up the inside. Carlos Sainz manages to overtake us there. We lose a position to signs, and we might have minor front wing damage to that front left end plate, as you can see. And there comes the rain, boys. The rain is on. Uh, we got so greedy there, boys. You know, it is a replay. Um, we tried to send it on Lando, but it was just too deep. We could have sent it on Lewis and just made a one place, got Lando the next lap or on the next straight. But I just got greedy, you know. Poor driving from me um, to send it there. But, you know, did I send it or did I not send it? You know, as Carlos Sainz said, speaking of Sainz, he is in front of us now. There's a yellow flag in sector one as we come through uh, turn one. And it looks like it's going to be the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc, who had a great uh, result in qualifying. He was up the grid in P3, I think. Um, and Carlos, I mean, sorry, Charles, uh, as we come through turn one, you can see Charles just how slow he is. And he does just pull over to the side. So unfortunate for Charles to have to retire there. But it frees up a spot in that top uh, positions for us. You know, uh, as we come through the end of the DRS straight now again, uh, and you see we've got Carlos in front of us. It's starting to rain a bit, boys. So we know once the track gets a bit more wet, um, we're going to have, you know, well, Carlos defending us very nicely there. We're going to be better than Carlos once it starts to rain, though. We're going to be a lot faster on these soft tyres. 
Again, Yuki Shinoda just holding up that pack in front. Very important for us to clear Carlos, try and get back to that position to clear Hamilton and Norris, because you saw before, we were faster than the, those guys. Um, if we would have just cleared Lewis, we would have got Norris. Um, and a lovely move from us there around the outside of Carlos Sainz. Fantastic overtake, if you do ask me. Um, but coming through now, a few laps later, we still have Yuki Tsunoda, um, who I believe is in P2. Uh, Hamilton and Norris, though, going too wide around this corner here. And we almost make contact with Lewis Hamilton. We have to slow down a little through here as these go too wide. Uh, very risky from uh, Lewis there. I don't know how he's not cleared. Norris still on those hard tyres. It's an absolute joke. Can we send it now up the inside? We do, but we play it more conservative this time. We take Lewis. This is what we should have done the first time. We take Lewis, um, and then can we take Norris? You see, we are so much faster than Norris already, um, but we've maybe waited a little too late to be able to catch Daniel Ricciardo. You can see how far ahead Ricciardo is of Sonoda. So even if we clear Norris and Sonoda, catching Daniel will be a very, very tough task. And we send it up the inside here of Norris. He has a little slide there on the exit, as you can see, uh, which works perfectly in our favour because he does leave us a lot of space on the inside there. If he did not have that slide, maybe he would not have done that. But as you can see, the track is getting a lot more slippery with the rain. Um, and Lando, I think this is a replay of the overtake. Lando on those hard tyres just slipping off um, offline a little bit there. You can see on the exit. He does slide a little, which just works perfectly for us. So now we've cleared Lando. Yuki Tsunoda in front of us. Um, Daniel Ricciardo flying ahead though. Can we catch Yuki Tsunoda? Um, can we catch Daniel Ricciardo? Who knows? Let's find out later on in the race. But we have not cleared Lando Norris yet. You see his wheel to wheel. There's Lewis Hamilton just behind him, heading into turn one on lap 24 as we come around the corner now. Uh, but we get so much better uh, of an exit out of that corner there. We're going to have DRS on Yuki Tsunoda now at the end of lap 24 down the home straight on those medium tires. Yuki he was. Um, I said before, hard seats on the mediums. And we cleared him with ease now. Daniel is in front on those hard tires, boys. Like I said before, Perfect strategy from us to go from soft to soft. Um, and look at this. <laughs> Yuki Tsunoda just smashing into the back of us there in turn one. Um, what an idiot. But yeah, like I said before, boys, when it rains, if you are on slick tyres, you want to be on soft, not mediums, not hard. Um, and you can see that Daniel is 2.3 seconds ahead of us on hard tyres. We are on the soft still. Um, we have done about 10 laps on these tyres so far. Um, so they are going to start to drop off. You can see we set a red sector one. They're going to start to drop off, but in the wet conditions, we're going to be a lot faster than anyone else around us. Um, and hopefully we can drag um, you know, these tyres out for a few more laps and then maybe move on to intermediates. Who knows um, how heavy this rain is going to be because you know it feels quite light at the moment and we can still see glimpses of the sun uh, coming through. You see the, the strategy telling us to pit there and we do actually pit on lap 26. Uh, we were supposed to try and go to lap 30 with these tyres, but the tyres just fell off boys completely. I was sliding everywhere. Maybe pushed them a little too hard to get all those overtakes in that you saw in the previous laps. I was sliding everywhere. It felt no good. So I thought we need to come in and box for the intermediates. Um, because going to it, I don't think we had another set of softs. And we couldn't have gone to softs anyway. Because obviously the rule stays you have to change a compound of tyre. Uh, and we'd already been on two sets of softs. So we couldn't do a third set of softs. So we go to the inters. Might be a strategic howler. Um, to go onto the intermediates this early though as we come out of the pits in P13 just behind Kimi Raikkonen uh, on hard tyres there now boys straight away um, when we came out of the pits and I was on these inters I thought I have made a strategic disaster this is such a bad call these intermediate tyres are not working at all they just weren't gripping the road I could not drive fast with these inters you see there we go so far wide um, on the, both of these corners here um, and yeah, I was just like, oh no, what have I done here? Everyone else is just going to stay on their tyres on the slicks till the end of the race. And we're going to finish in P13 and have an absolute disaster. Um, but, you know, let's see if these uh, Inters come alive. We've got a few laps left still. The rain looks like it's getting a little bit heavier now as we head down the main street. And we try and send one from way downtown up the inside on Kimi Raikkonen. And his contact with Raikkonen. That is payback for Mexico last week. Um, yeah. Um, if you didn't see that, that video like I said go and check that Mexico episode out that is payback for what he did to us but luckily he doesn't spin you know uh, we overtake a few people in the pits there we're up into P9 we're back behind Lewis Hamilton so um, I don't know how Hamilton's dropped so far back maybe he's pit again for another set of softs which would have been a howler from Hamilton uh, but you can see there boys uh, we let you, uh, Sonoda past us there snap of oversteer on the exit of that corner this is where I'm thinking these intermediate tyres are not the tyres to be on 
Sonoda's gone from mediums to softs. Um, he's obviously pit. It looks like I think Hamilton has boxed um, and gone from soft to soft. Um, and speaking of um, Hamilton, or is that Bottas next was in the Mercedes trying to set one up the inside uh, and we stay to the outside? Yeah, so Hamilton's pit for softs. Yuki's pit for softs. Here I'm thinking, oh no. We've pit a few laps earlier than these guys and gone onto inters. They've pit even later and gone back onto soft tyres. So this intermediate call is a very bad one. Um, but the teammate, as you can see, our teammate Callum is in the pits now. Um, as we head down the the main street, I do believe we are, um, or the the second street, sorry, on the, where the DRS is. And you can see their race control of the sable DRS. Now, this is where I'm thinking, boys we have maybe made the right call to go into these intermediate tires when race control disables drs that means it's too wet um and too like the conditions on the track are not suitable for drs it would be too dangerous to allow cars to have drs it is too wet for drs and um, which means intermediates are the right tires to be on when you see that sign usually and as you can see a lot of people in the pits there boxing again for like the third time in this race to go onto intermediate tyres and that allows us to come up into P3 boys, P3 and uh, Daniel Ricciardo who was flying ahead, he's still miles ahead of us there, nearly 4 seconds ahead, he's boxed for Inters as well so he has came onto the intermediate tyres but our decision to go early onto these Inters while everyone else pitted while we pitted but they went onto slicks, our decision to go into the Inters freed up a, a pit stop for us, you can see there Lando is now in the pits, uh, obviously the teams don't double stack on this game really. So Lando's in the pits, four is intermediate tyres, and we are up into P2. P2, boys. But just look at the standing water on the track here. Look at all the puddles and the standing water. This is looking more like full wet conditions than intermediate conditions right now. We have Carlos Sainz less than a second behind us as well. Uh, but we, there's only three laps left in the race, boys. Boxing now for full wets would be an absolute disaster. So there's no possibility of doing that. La uh, lap 34 of 36 now heading towards the finish line uh, or the, as we cross the line Carlos there we have to defend from Carlos down into turn one he's trying to send one up the inside trying to make up that place on us but um, yeah Max Verstappen up into P4 as well we know that guy is going to be uh, you know very fast you see he's less than a second behind Carlos as well but we managed to maintain our position in P2 Carlos Sainz, we managed to keep him at bay. We've got a little train of cars behind us. Verstappen, Vettel, looks like um, Lewis Hamilton or Valtteri Bottas. Uh, Sainz trying to go up the inside there, but we cut him off completely. Daniel Ricciardo crosses the line and takes the checkered flag for the race win. And we cross the line for P2 in the Brazilian Grand Prix. That is back-to-back -back podiums, boys. That's a fantastic podium. Super driving, really strong pace. Very, very happy. Is that a fucking podium, boys? Is that a fucking podium? Is that drive of the day? fucking get in boys so as you see there boys we do pick up a back-to-back -back podium and first, our first driver of the day finally we've got driver of the day boys it's been a long time coming the third to last race in the season we finally pick up the driver of the day award for the first time we came up from p10 uh, p12 sorry into p2 to finish the race with just a perfect race strategy taking one less pit stop than a lot of the people around us uh, and yeah Daniel Ricciardo like I said boys if we cleared um, Lando earlier um, if we cleared Hamilton then Lando if we didn't send it and spin we would have cleared Yuki very easily and maybe been able to catch Daniel before he got too far ahead and we could have been on for a race win boys so that one mistake where we did spin has cost us maybe a race win but we'll take a P2 we'll take a podium all day every day Carlos signs in P3 the guy last episode I said might be our teammate the the for next season. Uh, we'll just now, listen to this. Discuss, Ants, who would you say is a contender for driver of the day? I'm going to give it to the owner driver today. There was a lot going on all down the field, but they were the only one who I really felt maximised their potential. It's another clear just confirmation there of our driver of the day from Anthony Davidson. Uh, but yeah, boys, the, the guy I said last episode might be our teammate for next season. He won the race in Mexico, Carlos Sainz. He's on the podium with us again. So, uh, obviously, Carlos, shout out to him um, Valtteri Bottas coming up from P21 to P13 and taking fastest lap of the race look how fast Bottas was fastest lap was that is outrageous I said two purple sectors and he's done that so I don't know how um, like he's done that his middle sector must have been wild but with that podium there boys that P2 
Puts us into P7 in the uh, driver's standings. We've got a charity event here for Kalamilos. We can either give him a claim or focus. We don't care about his claim. Is you know X XP is level. We're gonna increase his focus for the last few races of the season. But how about that boys? Back to back podiums and a driver of the day finally. Who would have thought it? You know who would have thought at the start of the season you'd tell me we have uh, three podiums. You know it's it's crazy and we've still got two races left in the season. So who knows if we can pick up any more. Next episode is the Australian Grand Prix at the Melbourne Grand Prix circuit. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you hit like, comment, share and subscribe. You know the vibes, boys. I will catch us next time. Take it easy.